So my husband came back from the Navy at that point, and by that time, I loved the streets so bad, I wanted a divorce. I lost my daughter, I lost the husband, I knew nothing. My name is Nilsa, and I was raised going into a Catholic church. My mom and my dad took us to church every Sunday, and not, there was not one Sunday that we could say no to. If we didn't go, we would get punished. So we were going to Sunday school every single Sunday. Learning from my parents, um, they taught us that, you know, we are all sinners when we're born but not believing or not knowing what that meant. My mom um, and my dad baptized me when I was a little girl, and I thought, raising up with as a Catholic, I thought I was saved. Um, going to church every time, you know, I, my mom said that we needed to do our confirmation, which is something Catholic people do, and I needed to get prepared. As we get prepared, they asked my mom for my baptism papers, which my mom did not have. So the priest had let my mom know that I needed to be baptized again. I didn't understand then what that meant, but I did what my parents wanted me to do. So I got baptized at age 15. When I got baptized, the priest told me that everything past in the past would be erased. So I was happy. I'm like, okay, I stole from school. I cursed. I lied to my parents. So all that was erased at age 15. So I thought I was a new person then. The times went by and I started to get bored. So I stopped going. I was in high school. I remember going to high school and meeting my um, high school boyfriend. So when I turned 17, I was in the Lehigh Valley and I, in high school, I went to Liberty High School where I met my um, high school sweetheart. I actually married my high school sweetheart and had a daughter at age 18. My husband was going to the Navy. He applied for the Navy and he had to go. So left me behind with a little infant. I was naive, very young, didn't know what to do, so he left me with his mom and his family. I was so young that I didn't know how to raise a child, so I asked my mother-in-law for some help. Living with my mother-in-law, um, they were Pentecostals, so they had asked me, you know, let come to church with me, you know, you, you can change your life around. So, okay, I, you know, decided to go with my in-laws to their Pentecostal church with, which I didn't understand again, but I did. So I started going to the Pentecostal church and there was things there that I didn't understand. I thought they were kind of weird, um, but I learned that that's the way they do their things. So one of the things that I learned um, when I went there was that I needed to talk with different languages, like in tongues, the way they call it. That didn't go so well for me. I was kind of scared what that meant. To me, that was the devil. So I thought that I would get the devil inside of me, so I didn't want to do that. One day I went to the church and the pastor there asked me to come to the front so that they can pray for me because they wanted me to understand what that all meant about. So I did. I go to the front and he started praying for me. As he prayed for me, he poked me in the forehead and he pushed me where I fell to the ground. Again, I had no idea what that meant. I didn't understand it, but I knew I was following everybody else. So I became a follower. Not that I knew what that what that was about. So that same night that that happened, I went to my mother-in-law and I told her, I'm not going there anymore. I don't feel comfortable. I don't know what that was and I'm not going anymore. So my mother-in-law um, decided to, okay, well, if you don't do that, then you gotta find a home 
because we're Christians here. And I'm like, okay. So I moved back with my mom at that time and took my daughter with me. At 18, all I knew how to do was go out. So I wanted to go out and party with my high school friends. So one time, one day, I left my daughter with my mother-in-law and I forgot to pick her up. So forgetting to pick her up meant I lost my daughter in total. But I didn't care. All I wanted to do was go out. I started drinking. I started, I was presented to drugs, which I did once, but never again because I didn't like it. If I would have liked it, I think I would have still kept going. So my husband came back from the Navy at that point, and by that time, I loved the streets so bad, I wanted a divorce. I lost my daughter, I lost the husband, but still, I knew nothing. I still wanted to run around. Then I met my second husband in those travels. I married him and had two children. I had another daughter and a son. My second husband was an alcoholic. I became an alcoholic with him. So all we knew how to do together was party all day long, all night long. Yeah, we took care of our children, but that got to where it was actually beating our marriage. So that marriage lasts 11 years. And the reason why that marriage lasts 11 years because I, didn't want to, I did not want to do um, to my two children what I did to my first child. So I stuck with my second husband with the beating and the mental abuse for 11 years. After the 11 years, we got divorced. That didn't stop there. He, I had to get a PFA and all that just to get him away from me. So I decided to raise the kids on my own. He went to court and took my son. The court granted him custody of my son, so left me with just one child. That hurt me so bad. I met my third husband. With my third husband, there's no children, but he was another alcoholic. So the alcohol actually was on me for past couple of years. So with my third husband, I became even more with the, I, like I drank some more, like I was out, I would go to bed drunk, I would wake up drunk, there was no stopping me then. Um, I remember one time I couldn't do it anymore and I kneeled down and prayed to God to help me, but I wasn't getting any answers. So I gave up. I said, okay, I guess he's not going to answer me. Again, not understanding anything. So one day, now with my husband, I am still with him. So my third husband was still married. We're going on 20 years together. Um, but nothing's changed. In May 2012, even after praying so much to the Lord and giving up on the Lord, I um, was at work and I got very ill and I ended up in the ER that day or that night. In the ER, I was there for hours and hours and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. So finally, they decided to do an MRI and the MRI came back with a, I'm going to say something I really did not want to hear, but it was an aneurysm, a 4.4 aneurysm, which is really big on my right temple. So I asked the doctor, what does this mean? He said, well, we need, it's surgery. You need surgery like yesterday. And I'm like, yesterday. So I, I remember in the, in the hospital bed, I prayed again. And I said, what I said to the Lord, what are you trying to say to me? So I kind of like thought right there, is this my answer to prayer? But nothing. It was, it was still like not, nothing happened. So I went home and I said, well, I have no other options than to phone my sister. I phoned my sister and I let her know what happened. She says, you need to call Gisela Starr. And I said, okay, okay. 
days went by, people would knock at my door, bring tracks from, you know, for Bible studies. I would throw them in the garbage because I really didn't want to know anything about God. I really didn't. I was so angry. I was bitter, very bitter. I never knew that people used to say to me, well, you, you're good. You know, you haven't murdered anybody. And I'm like, that's right. I'm a good person. I haven't killed anybody. I don't steal from people. Yeah, I lied. I took a pencil, but it was from my job. So I didn't know that knowing later that if you break one of God's law, you've broken them all. So when I spoke with my sister and she told me that, that's when I realized maybe it's time. So in May, the end of May of 2012, I called Gisela Starr and we started a Bible study. I went to her house for four weeks. We did the Bible study, learned so much, so, so much. I did my Bible studies and she asked me if I was ready. And I said, no, I felt I was not ready yet. So I went on and got my aneurysm um, surgery. I was in the hospital for about two weeks. In the hospital, I thought there was a lot of thinking. So it was me and the bed and the empty room. So I had a lot of time to pray. And I said, Lord, I feel that you're calling me, but I, there's something missing. What am I missing? So I pray to God to ask, what am I missing? When I got home, I got a call from Gisela that the church was praying for me. And I, I said, I remember saying, wow, the church for me, I'm not even a good person. I'm bitter, I'm angry. But she said that to me. So in December of 2012, I called Gisela and I said, could you be my witness? I guess I was afraid to get saved on my own because I didn't believe myself. I says, I don't know if I'm doing it right. I, I didn't know. So when Gisela prayed, the day I went to her house and we prayed, I had this feeling that God said to me, what you're missing is faith. Because I had no faith. I didn't believe in Him. I had no faith at all. So the minute the, she did the prayer and I, I just felt that, I just cried. I got to my knees, I cried, and I just reached my hands, I raised my hands, and I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for everything. I went through every sin that I have done. At that moment, and people may not believe me, but I felt goosebumps from the toes all the way up to my head. And that's when I knew for sure I was saved. Days later, it felt really good. But I still question, even after being saved, even after feeling that, I still question myself. And I remember praying to God, can you just show me, show me what's the difference between before and today? And I felt that he says, you're a new Nilsa. Your old Nilsa went away. This is a new Nilsa. From there, I told Gisela I've been saved. I spoke to the um, deacons here. And in um, June of 2013, I got baptized at Lehigh Valley Baptist Church. Today, I am very blessed to be saved. I'm a member here. And I have to tell you, from what I was before to today, I've been sober for over 13 years. Um, my family loved me more now than I was before because I was so angry and bitter. Um, and I, I, I just want to say my last words is don't wait. Don't wait until it's too late. I thought that I had that on my own and I did not. So that is actually my testimony.